Charles, if that was you, could you do that again? What the? <gasps> I know I shouldn't run from this stuff. Oh my god. Oh fuck, I can only take so much. What the fuck was that? It is so much scary to deal with this stuff when you're alone. Oh my god. Somebody just tapped my shoulder. That fucking pillow was flying off of that chair. <gasps> I got nothing. Midwest Ghost Hunter and I'm on my way to Pipestone, Minnesota to investigate a haunted hotel that is said to be haunted by former guests that met their demise in two separate fires. I'm going to be by myself sleeping in probably the most haunted hotel room in all of the state of Minnesota and I'm not going to lie, I'm a little spooked, I'm a little creeped out at the thought of what could go on in there. For as cozy of a room as it's gonna be, I for some reason feel like I'm not gonna get much sleep tonight. All right, I'm just gonna go check in and uh, get the keys to the rooms. The first Calumet Inn was built in 1883 during the railroad boom period. It would quickly become one of the premier inns of Minnesota. However, in the night of December 16, 1886, a fire would break out, burning the entire building to ash. Two were fatally injured and Baptist preacher Alfred Stoddard Orchid would perish in the flames. The new Calumet Inn was constructed in its place by September 27, 1888. This hotel was much larger, housing 50 rooms and even featuring a bank. It would service guests for many years. It is until Valentine's Day of 1944 when a fire broke out for the second time. Cartographer Chris E. Hirschberger would die from smoke inhalation. The hotel was eventually condemned by the fire marshal in 1978. However, after new renovations, reopened its doors in 1981. So the rooms I checked out for tonight are room 308 and room 209, which the owner told me that some things went down in there. In 209, we had a guest that was staying up there and he was awakened in the middle of the night. He just said he felt like there was somebody in the room with him and he looked up and he saw a lady standing in the corner by the closet staring at him. Of course, he jumped up, ran out of the room and came downstairs to tell us that he feels uncomfortable. <laughs> but then we went back up there with him and we talked to him for a while and everything. Then he felt kind of more comfortable, you know, and then we told him, we're just downstairs, just holler, we can hear you, you know. <laughs> and I didn't hear anything else from him. You know, maybe she felt bad she scared him or something. Many other spirits are also said to reside at the old inn. A well-dressed gentleman is said to be sighted down in the lobby. Some believe this gentleman to be Alfred Orchid, the late preacher still lingering. The ghostly images of children and a mysterious woman in red have been seen in the hallways. The front desk is said to receive calls from unoccupied rooms. When a staff picks up the phone, there is only dead air. There are also reports of strange phantom music playing throughout the hotel. Apparitions in dated clothes are said to be sighted peering outside from the windows. However, the most haunted spot in the hotel is room 308, where the ghost of Charles Hirschberger still takes up residence. The television and lights are said to flicker on and off, along with objects moving on their own. Many guests have left in the middle of the night, 
due to the activity that goes on in room 308. So this is not the first time I've investigated this hotel. I've investigated this hotel one other time and I captured something in this room. Something very shocking to say the least. Now watching the video you can see the lamp flicker on but it doesn't stay on because the switch is actually rather difficult to get it to stay. But as you can see, eventually the lamp manages to turn itself on. Now this is a very difficult lamp to turn on. So whatever spirit was here managed to make this lamp stay and you actually have to get the knob. Hopefully you can see up there to stay that knob right there something twisted that knob and you can actually hear it on the audio I've been working here since 94, 95 I work for every owner except for one I cannot believe in this. You could not tell me there was a ghost. You couldn't make me believe in ghosts. I was playing in the park and we had a the table. I had to move them out. And I was playing in the park. And I went to empty the machine. I walked. All the way around here, walk through that door, and empty the carpet cleaner. I came back out, and you see how the lights are on? Mm-hmm. The lights were off when I came back out. We did not have a fan. There's no ceiling fan. Back here, I felt the wind go by me. Wow. There's no way a wind can go by you. Uh, the windows do not open up. I was walking by another, another day, walking by the restaurant here. One of these three windows, this one, this one, or the other one, I saw a little boy looking out the window. Looking out the window. I really didn't think anything of it at that time. Another time I noticed the same boy looking out the window. Wow. Then I was told but I knew nobody was in the restaurant that day, but I thought somebody might have had their pin here or some, some, something. I found out it's later on that that little boy is a ghost. <laughs> I don't know, can I say another group of paranormals was here. We were down here and they were trying to talk to Terry. And uh, the guy in that picture there okay. went in to seek. Everybody up here in to seek. And in fact, the guy in that picture there actually died right here. I was here, you know, we were all, it was about four or five of us. And he walked in the door, and he was walking up to the bar, and he stopped, and I was talking to him, and he went, <clears throat> bam, and just fell over. Now, when I was talking to the other group, I was sitting here, Harry was somewhere around there, People were over here and they had this little thing up and they were acting Terry to light it up. When he lit up one, 
and they were trying to talk to him, and all of a sudden, you see the fly swatter? Yeah. The fly swatter started swinging like this. I mean, it was swinging in a rapid movement, movement. And Tammy went down here with the other paranormal, and it was weird. I don't think this was the model, but the model cannot fall. There were other bottles here. This bottle, there was a bottle here. The bottle moved and then fell over. Gee. And Tammy had it on shelf. It just fell over. And in no way, the bottle Yeah, moved. they're not even moving. Yeah. This is where Chris used to stay at. He died in 308. He had some family or knew some people that were there. Because that's the room he died in when the fire had happened. And he had been seen on the fourth floor. He'd been seen on the third floor sometime by himself or with a little boy and a little girl or just a little boy or just a little girl. Now I was told I never seen it but right down there every once in a while you'll see a person just looking over the balcony. If I said I wasn't feeling nervous, I would be lying. I would be lying. I'm very nervous, but at the same time, I am excited. This place is reputed as one of the most haunted places in the state. I've got a feeling tonight something's gonna happen, and I hope I have my camera ready and pointed so I can capture definitive proof that yes, the Calumet Historic Inn is haunted. haunted, haunted. dining room this is where the lights are set to turn off uh, but I'm actually gonna see if they'll turn on first and just kind of explore around and see if anything weird happens in here hello Is there anybody here with me right now? Is there anybody sitting at any of these tables, hanging out? Are there any spirits in here with me right now? If so, could you make a sound? Right now I've got a K2 meter. I'm just gonna be scanning around for any unexplained fluctuations in energy. Are there any children in here with me? I hear that a little boy has been sighted in here looking out these windows. I've got a toy here in my hand. It's got a green light on it. If you grab it at the end of it or wave your hand by it or run by it, other lights will glow. 
different colors even. Is there anybody sitting in this chair? No? How about this one? Right here. Alright, so I'm going to try an experiment. I'm actually going to turn on the lights in here and see if the spirits will turn them off. Okay, I turned on the lights. Apparently somebody doesn't like it when the lights are on in here. Well, I dare you to turn these lights off. are on so far. I haven't heard anything or seen anything. It's pretty quiet so far. All right, I'm down at the pub. I got the camera set up on the bottles Just in case if any of them fall. Hopefully that doesn't actually happen because that would be a mess. Hello, is anyone here? Just here to say hi to anyone that's hanging down here. I hear a man named Terry hangs out down here. I hope you don't mind me having a seat. Terry, I'm very sorry what happened to you. I heard you die in this pub. You collapsed. What happened? Is this where you used to come to drink and party and have a good time? Is that why you hang out here? That's the fly swatter that was swinging back and forth. Terry, could you move that fly swatter? Could you swing it back and forth for me? Just like you did? That would be amazing if you did that. Are you back here? Oh my God. Somebody just tapped my shoulder. There is nothing here. Okay, okay, okay. I just felt you. Did you just touch me? You got my attention. Whoever you are. That startled the shit out of me. Did you just tap my shoulder? That scared me. Did you kick the system the thing kicking on again? Could you move one of these bottles? Preferably without breaking them. That sent the chill up my spine. Ooh, it just felt like someone just poked my shoulder. Just once, one little poke. Whatever that was, definitely got my attention. I've got two cameras set up. One is on the mirror because that is where 
the apparition of the woman is said to have been caught on camera. So hopefully if I'm lucky, that woman will show up. I'm going to be snapping some photos and seeing if any anomalies show up. Are there any spirits in this room with me right now? Is there anybody in this room? I hear that a woman haunts this room. It's a very beautiful room, I can understand why. If you are here, could you appear in front of me right now? I'm taking some photos and I would love to get a photo of you. I'm sure you were quite beautiful in life. Could you show me what you looked like? Why do you stay at this hotel? Did you die here? Do you just like coming here? Could you appear somewhere in this room? because it was so quiet out there. really weird I just heard like what sounded like talking in the hallway and I didn't acknowledge it right away because I'm pretty sure it was just people out there but I looked and nobody's out there and it's like 1 a.m. and it's dead silent it sounded like it was like right outside the door so I'm gonna go out there and see what might be going on Oh my god. 
That was not my eyes playing tricks on me. I literally just saw something up there. I was looming over that railing, looking over at me. Literally just looked like a white figure. Hello? Hello? But not my eyes playing trees on me. I literally just saw something up there. And there's nobody out here right now. It was right up there. It is really hard to contain myself right now. I have to be quiet. But that was, that was crazy. I need to go up there right now. This is right up here. This is right up here. There's nobody up here. It didn't make a sound. Nothing. Just loomed over that railing. I guess there's so much as peeking. Peeking out like this. It almost looked like a woman. Like with hair. And it was just all white. And it just boom. Charlie. I'm here to communicate with you. Charles. Do you remember me? So I definitely remember you. Holy shit, my battery's already almost dead. It's a brand new battery. Are you draining my battery right now? Okay, okay, that was a tap. That was a tap right on that nightstand. Charles, if that was you, could you do that again? Shit. Okay. Okay.
Okay, okay. What else can you do? What the? Okay, Charlie, I know you're not trying to scare me out of here. shouldn't run from this stuff. I know it's a bad look and I'm supposed to be a professional but oh fuck I can only take so much. It is so much scary to deal with this stuff when you're alone. I know I've said it many times in my previous video but oh god I still gotta get used to this shit. That fucking pillow that was flying off of that chair. I could even see it bouncing on the ground. And those coat hangers swinging back and forth, swinging back and forth. I got nothing. I'm going back in there. Can't run away. Can't just keep running away like that. Probably getting the kick out of this. Fuck. Charlie, I'm not gonna run this time. Made your presence known. That's exactly what I wanted.
that came from there, didn't it? And the chair. That means that pillow literally just flew off of that chair. It landed all the way over here. From there to there. How the fuck do you explain that? <sighs> all right. It's about four in the morning. Still in room 308. I'm gonna try to sleep for a little bit. Um, I'm gonna have a camera set up right here. It's gonna record me while I sleep. And uh, so if anything else happens, hopefully I'll get captured on camera. camera nearby in case anything happens. Part of me hopes nothing happens. I gotta get a little bit of sleep at least. You tell him to stop. He'll stop. Charlie. Charlie. I need to get some sleep. If you keep making noise, I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. Alright, I think it's stopped now. If anything more happens, I'll record again. So I've reviewed all of the evidence for the Calumet Historic Inn, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now the first half of the investigation was actually pretty quiet for the most part, minus my personal experience down in the pub when I felt something touch me in the back. I felt as if somebody was just right behind me, just going boop, poking me in the back. Uh, unfortunately, I did not capture anything that could uh, validate this personal experience. Uh, no anomalies showed up, no EVPs showed up. So yeah, first half of the night was pretty much quiet. Nothing on the audio, nothing on video. However, when I was in room 209, that seemed to be when the night really started to pick up. The first thing that happened was I heard what sounded like people talking out in the hallway. Uh, this unfortunately did not show up on the audio and neither did the whispers that I heard down the hall while I was setting everything up. But once I reached the end of the hallway, when I heard the whispering for the second time, clear as day, female whispering, and to me it sounds like it's saying, Do you guys hear something else? Do you think she's saying something else? Let me know down in the comments below. 
So we all know what happens next. I'm down on the main floor and I'm looking up. You can see me on camera looking up and I see this figure, this very transparent white figure looming over the railing like this, like looking over. And mm, get my camera up there as fast as I can. I did not capture it. And I didn't capture it the first time. I did not capture it the second time. And I did not capture it on the third time. Stereotypical ghost story, see it with your own eyes and then conveniently fil try to film it and it's just gone. So I'm a little disappointed because I was really, really excited when I saw that. Uh, I just saw it clear as day, translucent, it looked female, it looked like she had kind of like curly hair. Um, was it the lady in red? It didn't look like red, it just was all white. Maybe it was just the beginnings of her apparition, you know, sometimes uh, it takes a lot of energy for spirits to manifest color. Um, normally it starts out as either a shadow or a mist. I do wonder though, is that the same spirit that I captured on the EVP saying don't come in my room? I don't know. I'll let you guys speculate on that one. But on to room 308. Uh, much like my last investigation, this was the most active area. Uh, almost immediately stuff started happening. The first thing happened is when I asked for a sign and you could hear a tap. And it sounded like it was on the nightstand. Okay, okay, that was a tap. I ask it to do it again. <gasps> louder, louder bang. And it sounded like it was coming from the wall. You can see very clearly in front of me there is nothing that would create those sounds. So, no explanation for that. I asked Charles, what else can you do? What else can you do? What the? What the? What the? The coat hangers start moving. I panned around and you could still see them swaying back and forth so something knocked into them. Now I know what a lot of people are going to say. Oh, you know, he just reached behind them and moved the coat hangers with his hand and then, oh, pretended that it was a ghost. And I can understand it. People are going to be skeptical. But that's just simply not true. Those things moved. I had both hands in front of me and I panned around as fast as I could. I wish I was filming in that direction, but sometimes it's just... You really can't predict when something's going to happen or where it's going to happen. And the position I was in, I wouldn't have been able to reach them anyway. The camera, the way it films, things look much closer because of the lens. It's zoomed in for some reason. So those look a lot closer, but in the position I was in, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to reach them. So you're just going to have to take my word on it, unfortunately, but sometimes it's just how it goes. So at this point, I'm freaking out. I'm wanting to get out of this room and you can call me whatever you want. And I get it, it's funny to watch and you know, I'm make a fool out of myself a little bit with these videos, but in the midst of me freaking out, this strange whispery breathy sound comes from right behind me. It sounds like a man talking or something. But when I listened really closely to the audio afterward, it actually sounds like he's laughing. What the fuck was that? Could this have been Charles laughing his butt off at me? I, I think it's very well possible. I think he must have been getting a kick out of this. I think this piece of audio is also a great example of how things can sound pretty sinister. When you hear that recording alone, it sounds almost like demonic, you know? It, it, would, it would freak you out when you hear it, but again, to me, Charles is not a malicious spirit. He's I think he was just getting a kick out of watching me freak out. So I must drop the courage to get back into the investigation. I'm looking around the room and suddenly I feel a breeze and I pan down, I hear a thump on the floor and a pillow is just boom 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 onto the floor, just bouncing around. saw that I freaked out even more and I actually booked it out of the room 
Well, unfortunately, I did not capture the pillow flying off of the chair. Uh, it did fly off it. I felt it and I managed to capture it bouncing around. So I at least kind of know personally that this really did happen. Not only just from my own experience, but also just having video to document that yes, it did happen. But unfortunately, I know a lot of people are gonna scrutinize this and say that, oh, he probably just faked it. He probably just threw it himself or something like that. And that is just not the case at all. This thing went flying from the chair and I unfortunately could not prove it. After all that happened, uh, things went quiet uh, until I tried to go to sleep and noises just picked up again. <laughs> then I was startled by what sounded like somebody kind of like dragging their feet on the carpet. I keep hearing fucking movement by me. And funny enough, I asked Charles, hey, I gotta get some sleep. If you keep making all these noises, I'm not gonna be able to get any sleep. And it stopped completely. There was nothing else captured for the rest of the night. Interesting how that just happens like that. That makes me really think that that wasn't just noises in the wall or, you know, because I always try to be skeptical to, you know, I try to think like this is a very old hotel you know you're gonna hear a lot of different noises in the walls and everything uh, it's just an old building could be pipes but the fact that it just stopped right when I asked it to and nothing else on top of everything else that happened in that room I definitely believe that room through it is haunted not only based upon my this ex this investigation but I already kind of knew that this place was haunted just based upon the things I captured before so yes, I do believe the Calumet Historic Inn is haunted. Um, if you guys ever want to check the place out, it is a very nice hotel. Uh, it's not very much to book a room uh, compared to some other places. A lot of other places, especially historic hotels, tend to kind of be up there in price for the rooms. Uh, this place is very reasonable. I definitely recommend it to anyone who's interested in haunted places or just creepy old hotels, even just for the history. Be sure to check this place out guys. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it because it helps promote it. And comment your thoughts down below on the evidence. And of course be sure to subscribe because I'm going to be investigating tons more places by myself all across the Midwest guys. So join me on this paranormal journey. Anyways, thank you for watching and I hope to see you on the next one.